Well, good morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Another wonderful day today for us to rejoice and be glad in God. Why we have His life in us. I've got the life of God in me. I've got His life, His nature, and His ability inside of me. Today, I'd like to encourage you from Mark chapter number 11 and uh, verses 24 and verses 25 from the Passion Translation. Mark chapter number 11, verses 24 and verses 25 from the Passion Translation. In this particular chapter, we understand verses 22 says how the God kind of faith. And then verses 23, it says, you know what? If you uh, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever things he saith. And then in verses 24, it begins by saying this. The Passion Translation says that this is the reason I urge you to boldly believe for whatever you ask for in prayer. In other words, we see the benefit of boldly believing for whatever we ask for in prayer. So don't ask in doubt. Some people when they pray, they pray saying, you know, hopefully I might get it, you know, never know, I'll give it a shot and see. No. You're being told you need to ask boldly, believing. And whatever you ask boldly, believing, believe you receive and you shall have it. Then he goes on to say this. Be convinced that you have received it and it will be yours. In other words, we are told that your boldness and your faith in the prayer you prayed, if you believe when you pray that you have received it, you will have it. In other words, you have it when you prayed. Therefore, before I begin to pray, I have to make sure that I do not doubt. I have to make sure that I am not undecided. It makes, I make sure that I am fully convinced that when I ask in prayer, I ask believing that I receive it when I pray. And when I'm done praying, it shall be mine. Because it says, when you pray, believe you've received it. In other words, with the kingdom of God walking in faith, you always pay cash up front. You pay cash up front before you get the goods. It's like going to a grocery store and say you want milk. Before you go grab the milk and come to check it out and pay for it, when you walk into the grocery store by the door, you pay for the milk, and then you walk to the refrigerator to go and grab it. That is how the kingdom of God operates. In the natural realm, I get it first, that's when I pay for it. In other words, when I pray, I pray believing that I'll receive it and I do not rejoice until I see it in the natural realm. But in the faith realm, when I pray, I believe that I've already received it and then I will see it. And therefore, you've got to understand that that is how your faith needs to be released when you're believing God for something. Take that analogy again when you go to a grocery store. Probably you need some, some eggs. Well, you go get the eggs, you check that they are good, the expiration date is good, then you walk to the cashier and you pay for it. Makes sense in the natural realm. In the spiritual realm, they don't work that way. You pay for those eggs by the door, that is your prayer, and then you go receive them later on. And so I'd like to encourage you, you need to shift and change before you get into prayer. Make sure you do not doubt. Make sure you're not undecided. Make sure you're fully convinced that when I pray, I believe I receive and I will have it. Verses 25 says this. And whenever you stand praying, so this is something that is happening when you're praying. If you find that you carry something in your heart against another person, release him and forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also release you and forgive you of your faults. Which means now there is something that is going to be a hindrance for you receiving what you are about to believe for when you pray. Anytime you pray, holding somebody in unforgiveness is going to hinder you receiving what you are believing God for. And therefore this gives you an opportunity to take an inventory in your life. When you stand praying and you realize that, oh, I am not in good terms with so-and-so. I have not forgiven so-and-so and I'm not forgiven so-and-so. Immediately release them. Let them go. Why? Because offense is a stumbling block. It will cause you to fall. 
It will cause you to come short of receiving that which is yours. When you get into your prayer, you are like an athlete who is already on the track running. And when you're on the track running, you don't need a stumbling block because a stumbling block will stop you from receiving that which you intend to receive, which means winning your race. And therefore, unforgiveness will hinder you from receiving that which you're believing for. Why? It will always cause you to stumble because you'll hold animosity, you'll hold anger, and you'll hold rage in your heart. And those things are just a ticking bomb waiting to explode. And therefore, we are being admonished today that when you stand praying, Believe you receive them, but while you are standing praying, when you realize you have something against someone, let them go. I'd like to encourage you, don't wait until you get into prayer to let them go. Immediately it happens to you, let them go. If you know that somebody has offended in anything that they did or they said, immediately let it go. Because I don't want to be praying tomorrow about something and then I remember, oh... I had that thing again so and so the other day. No, let it go immediately. Let it go. Release the charges. Don't wish any bad thing to come upon them. Don't wish anything ill to come upon their lives. Bless them instead. Pray for them. If you pray for somebody with the same intensity you pray yourself for, you will never be offended against them again or they never offend you. So therefore, release them. Drop the charges so that when you're praying, your answers will always come to fruition. I'd like to encourage you, keep that in mind when you pray that you receive your results. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful day.